Um, I'm 18. I guess my freedoms would be um, just be able to have a car and just drive wherever I want. I'm 17 and I have the freedom to drive and it offers you a lot more because you get to go wherever you want basically. Yeah. I'm 18 years old now and I can stay out past 12 o'clock. <laughs> Uh, I can buy my own cigarettes. People don't need to buy them for me. I'm 18 and I can vote now. Um, I'm 16 and I'm allowed to come down the shore whenever I want now. When I was younger, I wasn't allowed to. I'm 17 and freedoms that I have now are... I'm allowed to do more stuff than I used to be able to and go out with my friends more than with my parents. I'm 15, like, I could stay out later and come down the shore whenever I want with just my friends and stay in a hotel room and have fun. I am 20 years old and I believe that I don't have as many freedoms as I do now than I did when I was younger because we can't go on the boardwalk without cops harassing us. We can't even run a hotel room without people asking how old we are, if we're going to have kids under the age of 18, if there's going to be underage drinking. Well, I'm 20 years old and I feel the opposite. I think I have more freedoms now than I did when I was 17 or 16 years old, you know. Uh, I don't know, just being older, it's a lot better, it's a lot easier and, you know, my, I don't get as much crap from my parents as I did now. So. I'm 16 and I don't, I don't have as many freedoms as her, like I can't go to that many places. I'm 17 and my dad doesn't let me do anything, I'm not allowed to do anything, but my mom lets me do whatever I want pretty much. I can go wherever I want, whenever I want, just as long as she knows where I am. The tug of war between dependence and independence is one of the most common experiences of your high school years. More than 70% of teens surveyed say that adults try to restrict them too much. They want more control over their choices. Yet at the same time, many teens feel anxious about the important decisions that are part of this stage in life. Decisions like, what do I want to do with my life? Will I go to college? Who do I want to spend the rest of my life with? So do we have enough freedom? And are we mature enough to handle these freedoms? Responsible freedom. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Cora. And I'm Jack. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. At the start of our show, we met some teens in the street who told us what freedoms they have. We'll talk with them again later about whether they think they have been responsible with the freedoms they have. We'll also talk with the teens here in the studio about this topic. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Will, and find out about some of the freedoms he has. Well, freedom to me is basically like you have your own mindset in, in your life. and. To do these things like, like when you're little, you always had like rules and boundaries and stuff between you to try to help you. And like when you get older, you don't have the boundaries anymore and you kind of learn off of like yourself and you kind of guide yourself through high school and things like that. Now like I don't really rely on my parents, like, but I still do. Like they, they support me and things like that. But I still have my freedoms like I work and I try to make my own things. I pay for my own car. I live close to my job so I, I have the I have the ability to like get there on time and stuff. You just gotta realize like I have to do like 100% all the time. Like I can't show up late and just be like, oh, I, I'm here. Some freedoms that I like enjoy are like I like to go out with my friends all the time. So, like I don't really have, well, like, I don't have like a like a like a parents who don't trust me at all. They think I'm gonna go out. Like if I tell them I'm gonna go out, they know I'm not gonna go out and start drinking or. I go uh, doing something stupid like that. I establish a trust with my parents, like basically by, by, by have, like respecting them as much as they respect me, and doing good in school and not getting in trouble all the time, and things like that. You just gotta worry about. Um, when when I'm in school and stuff, I try to keep on a good behavior. But there's always times when your life like you mess up and. But you guys gotta admit you're wrong, and that's the kind of things you gotta do with your parents. You have to always set your parents straight, and they always have to set you straight sometimes. So you have to have an equal level of like patience between them. Well, I learned on my own ways, and I also I have a nagging mother and father who always kind of lead the way on that and help me every day. Like I, mean, I still like wouldn't get things some things done if it wasn't for them. But I'm I'm still learning. You know, I still have time. I like how Will was able to admit that he's still learning. And it sounds like he has just the right amount of freedom and dependency on his parents. Let's meet our guests and find out what freedoms they have. They are Powell, hey. Ross, Anthony, Katie, Alex, and Catherine. So what are some of the freedoms that you have now that you didn't have when you were younger? 
well, I can drive, and actually, like, when I'm driving, it's, like, the most liberating experience because, you know, I'm in the car, I'm in control, I can change the radio station to whatever I want and just <laughs> go on down the road. It's great. It's uh -oh. so fun. Well, I can, like, watch the movies that I want and, like, read the books that I want and go the places that I want, not, like, supervised or anything. Something I've never done until this past year is, uh, I uh, can ride the train on my own now. That was something that I was even scared of doing before now. So, yeah. I think um, I've noticed that my freedoms like progressive. Like when I was younger, it was like, all right, you have to be home by dark. Um, and then, as you know, as I got a little bit older, all right, you have to be home by like you know 10 o'clock. And now that I'm driving, it's basically you know, be home before like around one. And if you know if you're gonna be too much later than that, you know, call us. And that's basically the big thing, you know. Even when I was younger, you know, if I was at a friend's house and we were all having fun, you know, just call so that they know where I am and then, you know, I could talk to them about staying out later. Yeah, because I think that um, when it comes to getting more freedoms as you get older, it's more about like less supervision because your parents know that depending on how mature you've gotten over the years, they'll give you more freedoms. Mm -hmm. The more responsibility you show, the more you're given type of thing. So do you guys think teenagers have enough freedom? I think a lot of teenagers have way too much freedom, and some parents see the freedom in those teenagers and don't give, like, their teenagers enough. Yeah, that's a good Sometimes uh, parents seem to be afraid to be a big monster, and sometimes you really have to put your foot down, and it comes to they're being reckless, and they're not being responsible, and you have to pay attention to responsibility when you're talking about freedom. I don't think that there's any particular amount of freedom that you can basically apply to everyone. Everybody's different. And it's part of the problem, one of the hardships of being a parent is trying to figure out, like, how much should I trust my child? Well, I think, I think some of the parents of our generation are, like, they want to be more friends with their kids than they want to actually be parents. So they give yeah. their kids the freedom that a friend would give another friend as opposed to the freedom a parent to give a kid. And that's a very scary thought because you're yeah. much more accepting of your friends than you should be of your children. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, like, I think there's some teenagers out there who have way too much freedom. Their parents just don't care, and those are the kids who get in trouble with the law or they get wound up in drugs or whatever. And then there's some teenagers that maybe their parents see the, like you said, yeah. see those teenagers and they're kind of afraid that that'll happen to their kids, so they don't give their kids any freedom. And I think that it's a whole matter of the parents getting to know their, their own child because that child maybe uh, probably is more responsible than the other ones. Yeah, parents just have to just know when to say no and uh, when to let their kids mature. Yeah. Actually, um, a 1997 USA survey called the Teens and Freedom Report found that more than 8 in 10 teens say that they are free to pick their own friends, listen to whatever music they like, or decide how to spend their own money. The same report indicates that teens are most willing to sacrifice freedom in matters of safety and health. And one important thing to remember about freedom is that having it does not give you the right to say or do anything you please. Freedom goes hand in hand with responsibility. For example, when we get a driver's license, we also assume a greater responsibility for our own safety and the safety of others. Let's go back to the teens on the street and find out if they have acted responsibly with the freedoms they have. I guess I've been uh, responsible mostly in uh, keeping my parents uh, noted about where I am or whatever, or what I'm doing when I'm out. Sometimes I've been irresponsible in that, like, I don't want to tell my parents where I'm going, and I guess, like, it's sort of like betraying their trust, but they don't know about it. I get in trouble sometimes, but I'm actually basically actually a good kid compared to my other friends. I've come in past curfew, and I've gone places where I shouldn't be. I stay out when my mom tells me to come in. I don't come in. I usually stay out later. Irresponsible. Stay out past curfew, stay places where I haven't been. I don't believe I've been irresponsible with any of my freedoms. I believe that I've done everything that a kid does responsibly. Well, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of irresponsible things, but I think I've grown up a lot in the past four years, so I've uh, kind of grown out of that stage, but I took it for granted when I was younger. I've been irresponsible just because of uh, tickets. I got caught riding a dirt bike and I got a little irresponsible with that. I got caught during, the, uh, I was riding a bike on the road and I didn't have my license or insurance. So, uh, but besides that, I'm pretty, I'm pretty responsible. I've been really responsible about driving and irresponsible about 
I don't know. I don't. Th I don't think really anything. I think I've been responsible. I come home on time when my mom tells me to. I always tell her where I am, and I don't lie to her, so she knows everything that goes on. I think that there's a lot of pressure today to make bad choices and be irresponsible just because your friends are doing it and also just to spite your parents because they've had control over you for so long and now you think you just have to try everything just to like get back at them. Responsible freedom is less about escaping the control of our parents and more about getting ready to behave responsibly and handle the freedom to make good choices. Exercising freedom responsibly does not happen overnight. It takes maturity and practice to consistently make good decisions. That's why we need the chance to practice good decision-making skills and to manage new experiences before going it alone. We can begin by making small decisions and living with the consequences of those decisions. And over time, we develop greater confidence in our ability to make good decisions. Can you think of any big decisions you've had to make recently? Have any of those decisions made you feel anxious or apprehensive, even maybe scared? Well, I had to uh, pick college because like, I graduated this year. And it was crazy because like, I was looking at all the different colleges and I know I wanted to go to college, but I don't know what I'm going for or anything like that. And like subconsciously, I think I was really afraid because like every time I would try to start it or every time I would go into it, like I'd always get really sidetracked on that thing over there, you know, and I wouldn't think about what I was doing with college. And really, I literally turned in my application the day before it was due. Like, so m my entire, my, my guidance office was really happy with me because they had to do everything and like send it in so quick, it was crazy. But you know, I got in now and it, it, it's, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. I think, you know, virtually the same thing as choosing a college. Not so much getting in, but like, you know, when I got accepted in a couple different places, you know, narrowed the choice down to two colleges and narrowed it down, you know, trying to figure out which one I thought was gonna be right for me and which one I really wanted to go to and I thought, you know, that was a tough choice. That, you know, kept me up a couple of nights uh, thinking <laughs> about it. But, you know, you get through it and hopefully I'll be better now, you know. I think I made the right decision. Yeah, well, you guys are going off to college and everything. I'm going to be a freshman next year in high school and I've had to pick all my classes and I actually had a scheduling conflict so I had to pick another class and that was, mm -hmm. it's really hard to pick your classes because there's so many to choose from and you're like, well, I don't know what I want to do when I go off to college and you're trying to pick the right classes for that and it's, there's um, four years ahead of you that you're trying to decide in like an hour or two and I ended up having my best friends and my parents help a lot. Well, I had almost the same thing but like I had to choose between two high schools, one my family had gone to like generation after generation <laughs> and the other one no one had gone to but I really liked it and it was and that school I ended up going to that one but they pretty much chose all your classes for you depending on how you did on the entrance exam but it was a pretty hard choice to decide between like what everyone in my family was going and there are people there already who I knew and this other school that I thought would help me better academically but it was a pretty hard choice. Yeah, and I know that college can be a really stressful time just to decide what you want to do. But also, um, like I have an example of a, of a car accident that I was in, and uh, college is a lot of planning, but this is, you know, like really quick actions that you have to take, and, you know, when you're not really thinking about it. So I was driving down south one day, and uh, all of a sudden I see this car just going straight at me and then swerve. He started spinning. So I had no idea where he was going, what he was going to do. So I swerved off the road and he just hit me from the back. Uh -huh. But so I was like, you know, far away from home. And, you know, <laughs> it was it was my time to exercise my personal freedom. And the first thing I found myself doing was calling my dad. <laughs> 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 you know, just to That's check for like one. the legal, right, legal rights to see, you know, what, what documents I need to take, what information and all that stuff. But, you know, just as long as as long as you're mature in your actions and you know, yeah. you can't go wrong. Yeah, my family likes to make us choose whether or not we're going to stay in a state or leave it. Um, <laughs> I've moved five times in three states, and it's just, it, it's a really big decision, because, you know, he's not going to leave if we're all wanting to stay, but you have to really think, like, d am I happy with the life that I have now, or do I want to try for a new one? And it's really big decisions that you have to make. Assuming the responsibility that comes with freedom can be scary. It can raise all kinds of other questions like, am I really ready to do this by myself? What if I make a mistake? 
Let's go back to our Spotlight interview with Will and listen to some advice he has on this. Making my own decisions is something I always want. I, I don't really seek advice so much. I like to do it on my own. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad. You never know. Well, in school, I got in a couple of trouble a couple of months ago. Like, it was like I usually kept a clean record in school and things like that. But all of a sudden, like, over like a three week period, I just had a bad spurt like that. And my parents got really disappointed. But after, after a while, they, they kind of like accepted them. Like, they respected me again and they, they kind of accepted what happened. But things like that, you just got to move on from it. And like you always, sometimes you abuse lessons like, like taking things for granted and not doing things on time and like assignments and stuff. Like, like then you get like a, an F on a paper, and like you procrastinate for like three weeks when you had like two months to do it. To earn back your parents' trust, it's, you just got to like show them that you really want it back. Like you could, I guess you could talk to your parents about it. Like you just gotta want, make them understand what happened, and then, you, then you, like you make a pact to yourself. You know, I'm not gonna do something stupid like that again, and I'll, I'll make it up to them. A lot of people that I know, they, they get in trouble, they start drinking, and you know, they, they do, they do drugs and things like that, and their parents find out, and they're grounded all the time, and things like that. You know, I, I'm not one to keep always to do something like that, but. Like, things like that, you just gotta, like, think before you do something. That used to be something people used to always tell me because I never used to think before I did something. Like, if you think what you actually are doing, you'll actually realize how stupid it is. And then, then you'll actually have, like, an actual mindset of what's going on around you. And that's kind of something you gotta realize. Like, people don't always realize that. But when, they, when like, when they, when they get in trouble, then they start to realize, and like, oh, that was so stupid what I did. Well, everybody thinks they need more freedom. Like, like let's say you don't get something you want, you know, like, oh, someone else, so and so got something for her birthday. You know, why didn't I? You know, like everyone has that freedom, like limited to a certain thing. Like me, I think I have enough freedom as it is. But there's always something you always want. Like anybody will have that. But really, freedom is what you earn, not really what you get. Thinking before you act is very good advice. It's very simple, but so true. You just have to stop sometimes and really think about what you're doing. Yeah, I remember he was talking about, you know, not doing assignments on time. There was, there was this one time where I had to do this 10-page paper, like research paper, in one night, because I didn't do anything, and it was oh. due the next day, and my teacher was like, <laughs> so I had to like, that. yeah. I think we've bad. all done that. Well, First of all, assignments not on time, like a week late, those are my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> because you figure you're not gonna finish it in the time that you're given because you wait till the last minute and then you're like, ah, oh, well, you know what, it's already late, so I'll do it when I get around to it. Yeah. And that comes like three months later and the teacher's just like, what is this? And you're like, oh, it's the assignment from way back when. Uh, when I was first entering high school, among, uh, among the choices, the, the assignments and all that, I had planning concerning classes and I had to choose between joining choir, and I was in all these advanced choirs, or I would uh, start into arts and do all the foundation classes and the drawing and the painting classes so I could get into art studio, which was an AP class. And um, so I eventually, I chose the art, the art class and over the choir, and um, like two years, that was two years ago, and I'm still like feeling the repercussions of that. I, some part of me wishes that I had uh, sat down and made a list of the pro and con pros and cons because like, I, I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I was just like, well, mom said this, dad said this, my friend said this, so I really needed to think it out more with myself and I'd wish I'd made a list of just things that were good, things that were bad, and also maybe alternatives. I could have uh, taken choir at school and taken an art program outside of school or done an extracurricular. And, uh, I, I took the, you know, I had the freedom to choose what I wanted to do, and I feel sometimes like I made the wrong choice, so I'm still feeling that. Well, to get back to what Will was saying, how uh, freedom is earned, I think that's very true because no matter how much freedom you want, your parents are the ones that are holding the keys and everything, because they're, as long as you're living in that house, you're going to have to live by their rules, and until you can show them that you're responsible, they're not going to let you do anything. So all you could really do is just show that you're responsible and then that how you're maturing over the years shows them how much freedom they're going to give you. And just remember, once you break that trust, then it's, it's real hard to get it back. Mm. Yeah. For a Christian, the question becomes, how do I use my freedom to choose the right way? 
How do I freely choose what is most beneficial for me and others? How do I live as God wants me to live? Is it unrealistic to think that no one else is being hurt by a decision you make? We all exist in an interconnected web of relationships. St. Paul wrote about this to the Corinthians. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. We always want to make decisions that are good for us and good for other people too. As disciples of Christ, our faith has to play a role in making responsible decisions. Next, let's go back to our interview with Will and find out how the different aspects of his faith life helped him to make responsible decisions. I always wanted to go in youth group because I always heard it was like the bomb, you know? Everybody loved it, you know? Ever since freshman year, really, I started coming to the presentation and things started lighting up for me. Like, I didn't really have a great middle school time. I didn't have that, as many friends as I do now. But like, things like faith will actually change your attitude a little bit. And the faith is like, it, it makes you think a little bit. Like back to what I was saying about how you want to think before you act. Things like that, it makes you. It makes you think about all the good moral decisions you can make in your life. When I pray, like I feel like, you know, like okay, I'm just, I'm talking to God, really. Like we're just having a conversation. Like it's like all in here, and you're just like kind of got that one one on one kind of thing. But you know, I uh, I do that one time, like when I'm in church or like at home, and I'm like just thinking about myself, like you know, what what do I have to do? Like what are my expectations? You know, like you just like, kind of you need like a shoulder to lean on or something like that, something to help you out. And like when you start talking, you actually like realize what's going on. And prayer sometimes can help. Like always something, never, nothing always bad happens when you pray. It's usually something good. Like you always have a conscious saying, you know what, this is not a good idea. I shouldn't do it anyway. Like that's kind of like God talking to you really. Like he's like, he's the guy who's always pushing, oh, I'm not gonna, don't do that. It's all right. Like to have freedom, you need to be responsible at the same time. Like anyone can get freedom. Like Americans get freedom all the time. We always have that freedom. We just gotta, we just gotta live up to it. We don't want to abuse that freedom, and we want to keep it the way it is. And if you're responsible, you gotta just think ahead of time. And you just want to, like, like set the goal for yourself. What you want to do in life, and you just want to think of what you need to do. You don't want to abuse it, and you just don't want to do something stupid enough to like hurt yourself or anyone around you. You just gotta keep it the way it is. When, if you really wanna in your life, you wanna, you wanna really make yourself responsible and have that freedom that your parents want to give you. You really want to live up to it. Like, tell your parents, like, how much you love them and, like, how much you really want to, like, live up to what their ex expectations are. Like, sometimes you, you can do that, and sometimes you got to show it. And you got to do it in many ways, being, like, in school, at work. Like, make sure, like, you can live up to it. You know, just uh, try your best, and that's the, if, you can, if you do your best, that's, they'll accept it. I like what he said about how faith gives you a shoulder to lean on when you need it and it helps you change your attitude. In what ways does faith help you guys in exercising your freedoms responsibly? Well, like, like you said, you know, like you talk to God, oh, I question my head, should I really do this? And you know, you get an answer and you're like, well, I know that was what God said, so I should kind of follow that one, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just, I kind of, okay. I kind of, you know, wake up in the morning, I don't really know what I want to do or what I should eat. And it's, you know, kind of like in my head a little bit. And I'll, you know, ask God, yeah, what should I do today? What should I eat? <laughs> and, you know, you'll get an answer. You'll go downstairs and you'll get, you know, a bowl of cereal. Or you'll make yourself an egg and little decisions. But I think it's God kind of telling you what to do for the day, what you should do. Yeah. I think he's always there for making, helping you make decisions, big or small. Well, you know, God sometimes uses your conscience to help you make the right decisions. You know, you get this feeling that you know what you're doing is wrong and you should just stop it. And that's God trying to help you out in life, make you make the right choices and everything. I think the most important interaction between our faith and our responsible freedom is when we receive confirmation. Because we are receiving the gifts of God and that, we, that we've had since our birth. And we're finally learning how to use them from this. And uh, at this point, um, with your freedom, you can choose to do wrong, you can choose to do right. And uh, after confirmation, uh, your faith is going to help you uh, gain moral ground on that, gain uh, you know, confidence and wisdom and whatever it is that God has decided you need. 
Yeah, and uh, the biggest part of our faith is the Ten Commandments. So if ever you need help in a decision, just look to that, because that, that should guide our decisions. Some of us may feel our parents don't give us enough freedom, but they will gradually be able to let go of control as they see us demonstrating increasingly responsible behavior. Eventually, they will come to rely on our decision-making skills. At least, that's what I hope will happen. <laughs> we should try to keep them informed and to ask their advice on important decisions. Showing respect for their opinion and experience helps all of us to strike an appropriate balance between dependence and independence at each stage of development. According to the National Mental Health Information Center, once respect, responsibility, and reliability are established, parents can learn how to support their children as they grow in their ability to make good decisions. What are some of the freedoms you have? Are you responsible with them? We want to know. Contact us through our website. The address is realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And one last bit of advice when it comes to making responsible decisions. Talk to someone you trust. It doesn't limit your freedom to seek advice from your parents, teachers, or your pastor. Consult with a friend that shares your values. Listen openly to what they have to say and take it into consideration. You will find that people truly want to help you make the best decision and that they care about and support you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.